rise. The Municipal Court for the City of Stoughton is now in session. The Honorable Matthew T. Rothy presiding. Uh, please be seated. Uh, please silence all cell phones, remove all hats, and cease conversation. We'll call the court to order at this time. My name is Matt Rothy. I'm the Stoughton Municipal Judge. It covers the jurisdictions of the City of Stoughton, Towns of Dunkirk, Pleasant Springs, and Rutland. I'd like to go through some of the procedures we follow in the courtroom. These procedures should have been available to you in the pamphlet as you enter the courtroom. Uh, we take people on a first come, first serve basis. Tonight we take pleas. So when you're when I call your case up, uh, please come forward. Uh, you'll be asked to enter a plea of guilty, not guilty, or no contest. If you enter a no contest or guilty plea, I'll review your citation. If there's a factual basis, I'll accept your no contest or guilty plea and find you guilty and impose an appropriate forfeiture. A plea of no contest is similar to a guilty plea, but a conviction arising from a no contest plea cannot be used against you in a later civil action. Let me uh, give you an example. Say if you were in, had a traffic accident and you received a citation, and uh, if you enter a no contest plea to that traffic citation, then the person, if they sue you later for the damages in that automobile accident, cannot use your no contest plea against you. The forfeitures range from $20 to $10,000. Almost all, however, are within the $50 to $200 range. The state mandates that we add costs to your fine. For example, a $50 forfeiture results in a total fine of $124. I'll grant you 30 days to pay the fine. If you need additional time, please let me know and we can arrange a payment plan. If you do not pay, I, just, I have limited options of what I can do. I can intercept your tax refund. I can assign your case to state, you know, state collection services. I can suspend your driver's license for one year. I'd rather not do that. If you have any trouble paying this, uh, please let me know and we can try and work out a payment plan. If you enter a not guilty plea, we'll set your case over to the next court session for a pretrial. The date is March 8th, 2017, at which both time you and the city attorney will meet and see if you can resolve your case. At the pretrial conference, you can bring whatever witnesses or documents might help your case. Those of you here facing traffic offenses should understand that you lose demerit points upon conviction for most such offenses. If you lose 12 or more points within a 12-month period, uh, you will lose your dry license to drive in Wisconsin for a certain period of time. You will also be fined. I'd like you to be aware of some of your rights before you're entering your plea. You have the right to ask for a continuance. This means that your case can be set over uh, to another time, either to consult with a lawyer or for some other reason. This is a civil court. So you're not entitled to a, a public defender, but you may hire one at your own cost. You also have a right to a trial. Please remember your rights when considering your plea. Those of you charged with operating a motor vehicle while under the influence are entitled to request a jury trial at the circuit court upon proper payment of the proper fees. All, of, all other cases will be heard in this court with the right to appeal my ruling to the circuit court. That concludes my opening statements. This time I will take people on a first come, first serve basis. The first people, the person that came in was Jeffrey Ar Ardenson. How do you say it? Ardenson. Ardenson, thank you. <coughs> Mr. Ardenson, do I have your correct address on uh, Barber Street and Sun Prairie? Yeah. All right. You're facing, uh, you have three citations. Um, let me let's go over the first one. First citation is for criminal damage to property. This citation carries a penalty of $187. Yep. The forfeiture on the criminal damage to property is uh, anywhere from uh, $100, $150 to, um, I think, believe it's $5,000. So you're at $100 plus cost. You're on the low, low end of that. Um, the other citation, hang on, let me get three. Oh. Oh, okay. And the other is you have three citations for a criminal damage to property. Another one for $187, same, same forfeiture range as before, and a third <coughs> citation for $187. The last two, um, in addition to criminal damage to property, if you cause damage to property, you, um, the person that was allegedly damaged, they can file a restitution request, yep. and I can order it as well. The, the last two cases, two of the three citations, people have already... The, the victim has already filed a restitution request. Right. The damages are forthcoming. So, do you understand that you're facing three citations for criminal damage to property? Yeah. All right. And you understand the forfeiture range is it's 187. I've explained the forfeiture range to you on these. Yeah. You understand what restitution is as well? Correct. All right. Any questions for the court? All right. 
Now is the time I take her plea. The three plea options are uh, guilty, no contest, or not guilty. Uh, no contest. Okay. You understand that with no contest plea, I'll, I'll review the police report, and if there's enough evidence, I'll find you guilty? Yep. All right. You understand that you're also subject to restitution for all three of these offenses as well? Yeah. All right. Let me read the police report. I want to make sure I have a factual basis for your... Okay. I have reviewed the police support. I do find a factual basis uh, for your plea, except <coughs> no contest plea, and find you guilty. Anything you'd like to say before I decide on a sentence? Not really. Okay. Um, I do find $187 is appropriate. Um, I, will, I won't make any rulings on restitution hearings. What will likely happen is if people come forward and request that you pay them, I will probably set that for a hearing, unless you can reach an agreement with them uh, on your own. Right. Um, that would be the option. So. Total forfeiture is $187 times three, which will be $561. Um, can you pay for that this evening? Uh, I can pay for a little bit of it. How much, uh, let me rephrase the question. How much time would you need to pay for the $561? Probably, let's see, maybe about like four weeks. Okay, you know what? I'll go on the safe side. I'll give it 60 days to pay, just because that will give you not 30 days might be four weeks, but just in case that I always like to make sure that people pay for this. Right. So I will, my clerk will print out the forms and give you 60 days. Um, if you have any trouble paying within the six days or something comes up, let us know. And I, we, we, we what we would do is we would schedule a hearing right. you, with the prosecutor would be in the room then to see if there would be any extension of time. Normally I don't have a problem with granting at least one extension and the prosecutor doesn't either, but I All just right. want you to be aware of that as well. So. Thank you. Okay. Uh, anything else? Nope. All right. Uh, if you want to wait just a minute, the, when the forms are ready, I'll signal you, and you can come up and uh, and take them then. All right. Johnson. There you go. Thank you for waiting. And with that, that will take care of it for this evening again. Thank you. Ramiro Ariano Felipe. Mr. Felipe, do I have your correct address on Wright Road in Janesville? Yes. Okay. You have uh, three citations. We'll review them one at a time. The first citation is for unsafe lane deviation. This citation carries a penalty of $98.80 and four demerit points issued your driver's license. The forfeiture range on unsafe lane deviation would be $20 or $40. So you're right in the middle of that. That's a $30 fine plus cost. Do you understand what unsafe lane deviation is? Not really. Okay. Do you want me to read this? I can read the statute for you. Why don't I go ahead and do that? Please. Okay. 
It's Ordinance 70-1, which adopts the state statute of 346.13 of the Wisconsin Statutes. And let me read that statute to you. Okay, subsection 1. Driving on roadways lane for traffic is the, uh, the heading of the statute. It says, whenever any roadway has been divided into two or more clearly indicated lanes, including those roadways divided into lanes by clearly indicated longitudinal joints, the following rules, in addition to all the other rules consistent with the section, apply. Except as provided in subsection 4, the operator of a vehicle shall drive as nearly as practicable entirely within a single lane and shall not deviate from the traffic lane in which the operator is driving without first ascertaining that such mo movement can be made with safety to other vehicles approaching from the rear. Subsection 4 says, upon a two-way roadway with at least two lanes for travel in each direction, a wide implement of husband husbandry is defined in section 347.24 and that is being operated in compliance with the applicable requirement under these statu statutes and is being operated as much as practicable within a single lane made to the extent necessary to extend into another lane of travel indicated in the same direction if it does not impede other vehicles approaching from the rear. In other words, if you had a farm truck, there's an exception for that. Yeah. Given that explanation, does it, do you have a clear, more clear understanding of yes. deviation? Okay, good. All right, so that is uh, unsafe lane deviation. The other statutes are as follows. Um, you have one that's called operating while under the influence of an intoxicant. <coughs> and the penalties for this are as follows. It is an $861 fine. And the forfeiture range on that, they, that, they add an assessment charge to that. It's $150 to $300 plus costs, and they add a $355 uh, forfeiture. So usually the forfeiture range on this is $705 to about $950. So again, you're kind of in the middle yeah. for that. So an $861 fine six points, and then a driver's license revocation of six to nine months, depending on your blood alcohol content and your driving. And then you'd have to take an alcohol and drug assessment class as well. Now, in addition, if, you, if your blood alcohol content was 0.15 or higher, I have to surcharge you $50, and I, the state mandates that I add an interlock ignition device on all vehicles registered in your name for a period of 12 months. Do you understand all those penalties? Okay. Yes. Those are the penalties for OWI. There's another citation for, prohib for prohibited alcohol concentration, and the penalties are the same for that. 861, six points, six to nine month driver's license certification, uh, alcohol and drug assessment class, and then above a 1550 $50, and then an IID for 12 months. However, you can only be found, you only have to pay one set of those, those penalties. In other words, if you pay, if you're found guilty of both, I can only impose those, that set of penalties once, not twice, even though you got two citations. <coughs> okay. Do you understand that? Yes. Okay. All right. Do you have any questions regarding the OWI or PAC citations? Okay. No. And that this time we take a plea, three plea options are guilty, no contest, or not guilty. If you like, I can go through those pleas again. I think I already take not guilty. I already get the lawyer. I didn't get a chance to get one yet, and I yeah, no problem. Really you don't have, you don't have to explain why you need to enter a not guilty plea. I'll just go ahead and enter a not guilty plea. We'll schedule this matter for a pretrial conference on March eighth. Um, I'll give you a notice of that in just a second. The pretrial conferences are held uh, downstairs. There'll be a conference room marked pretrial conferences. There you can meet with the city attorney in, on March 8th, and I'll give you the time in just a minute. It's a chance to tell your side of the story, so bring whatever witnesses or documents might help your case. I'll make sure that you appear, because if you don't appear, I'll find you defaults and I'll find you guilty and impose all those penalties. If you do hire an attorney, have the, the, your attorney contact the city prosecutor. Usually when you hire an attorney, they will negotiate at separate times other than the pretrial conference then. Okay. So, all right. I had another question. Um, do you, do you have another date that I can do this, or you just have to be lying on March 8th? Okay. March 8th, if you hire an attorney before then, let the, have your attorney contact the, uh, the prosecutor then. And if you cannot find one by March 8th, I'll give you the, the pretrial conference notice. You can call the prosecutor as well, indicate that you're in the process of hiring an attorney then. Okay. Does that answer your question? Yes. Okay. All right, the forms will be ready in just a minute.
right, the notices are forward. If no further questions, I'll give these to you, and then that will take care of it for this evening then. Thank you. Heather Greenwald. Uh, Ms. Greenwald, do I have your correct address on Nora Street? In yes. Stone? Okay. Yep. Been cited for operating after suspension. This citation carries a penalty $124 and three demerit points issued to your driver's license. The range on these, I believe, here, let me check for sure, is zero to 25, no, it's 50 to $200 for operating after suspension. You're at the, $50 plus cost is $124. Okay. You're at the minimum for that. Do you understand what operating after suspension is? Yes, but I did not know that I was operating after suspension. Would you like to enter a not guilty plea? Discuss that with the city attorney. No, I just really don't want the points taken off. Is that something, is that what I do the not yeah, guilty? If I, yeah, okay, yeah. then yes. So we'll do the not guilty <laughs> plea. Have you updated your uh, suspension? Yes. What, what I would suggest is bring that proof into the okay. show to the prosecutor at the pretrial conference. Okay. Then. So, all right. I'll enter a not guilty plea. We'll schedule the matter for pretrial conference on March 8, 2017. Okay. Bring uh, proof that you've uh, updated your... Uh, just, I paid it online, so just on my phone, it would be... Yeah, if you want to bring the phone and show that, that okay. it's, it's updated. I mean, they sent me an email that I picked up. Yeah. Right, right. Okay. So, okay, I think that would work. So let me give you the form, but I think that... that I, and it's one thing that I can't... I'm the judge. I can't enter into plea gar bargains. I do make exceptions for speeding, right. but I give a 10-mile-an-hour leeway. But for okay. these type of citations, I, I just don't know enough. And I, right. I, I'm to be a new, neutral arbitrator, right. basically. So, <laughs> so if you want to step forward, I can yes. give you those forms. Make sure that you appear, because if you don't appear, I'll find you a default. Yeah. Downstairs in the conference room of the March pretrial conference. Okay. So. I typically do pay the fine. Do they send something to tell you that? Well, this you don't you don't owe any fines? No, I mean I just because of this, like I had it. You're getting into the realm of the Department of okay. Transportation, and I don't want to. Okay. I'm not an expert of that, I'm so. By all of it. Right, I understand. So, okay. when or not guilty plea, make sure that you attend your pretrial conference. Thank, Thank you. you. Zethrin Zekert. Zykert? Okay. Mr. Zykert, do I have your correct address on uh, Marled Court in Stoughton? Uh, Harold Court. Oh, yeah, that's what I have. I'll make a note of it then. Thank you. Um, you've been cited for illegal passing of school bus. This citation carries a penalty of uh, $250. Now, the citation I have says zero points. Let me verify that. I thought there were points involved with this. Oh, this is um, 45. Is, it says illegal pass of school bus reported, but that's owner's liability for illegal pass of school bus. In other words, they probably gave you a citation later. I don't know anything about the citation. That's just the what I'm saying. But it is correct. It's zero points. The forfeiture range on this is thirty to three hundred dollars. Do you understand what illegal pass of school bus reported is? Uh, yes. Okay. Um, you understand the penalty is two hundred fifty dollars as well. Yes. Any questions for the court? All right. Now is the time I take the plea. Three plea options are guilty, no contest, or not guilty. No contest. Okay. You understand with no contest plea, I must find you guilty. Yes. If I, as long as there's the facts warrant it. Yes. All right. Let me read the police report. I want to make sure I have a factual basis for your plea. Okay, I have reviewed the police report. I do find a factual basis for your plea. I'll accept the no contest plea. 
and find you guilty. Okay, um, what would you like? Now is the chance to tell me anything before I decide on the monetary penalty. Uh, anything you want to tell me? Um, <clears throat> when it when I got when it happened, uh, as I was, I felt as I was approaching, I was already in the middle of a four-way intersection, and I couldn't quite stop in the middle of a four-way intersection because I would block traffic. So I slowed down as much as I could when the lights came on and the bus started slowing to get to the stop. Okay. Yeah, I'm familiar with these type of cases. And whenever there's a school bus at that time, then you always have to be careful. You always want to make sure that you can plenty of time to stop. So I, yeah. I understand you, you have got too far, but you're probably driving a little too fast previously to that. But how is your uh, driving record? Uh, clean. Okay, is this your first citation? Yes. Okay. Do you have a probationary license? No. Okay. So just I always want a warm uh, probationary license holder. The second moving citation is double. So, you know what? Given the fact that you're, this is a fair. I, this can be a potentially dangerous situation, but you've got a clean record. What I'm going to do is I will reduce the forfeiture from two hundred and fifty dollars to one hundred and eighty-seven dollars. I think that that's uh, fair to all parties and. I want to make sure that you follow law, but I also am appreciative of your driving record and your honesty tonight as well. Thank so, you very much. Okay, of the $187, uh, can you pay for that this evening? Yes. Okay, what I will do is I will give you the form uh, the, the indicate that you owe $187. You can take that downstairs to the dispatch window and make payments and then pay it in full. If not, I will grant you 30 days to pay as well if you don't do that tonight. All right, sounds good. Any questions to the court? No. All right, if you want to step forward, I can give you the form. And that will take care of it this evening then. Thank you. Alyssa Halverson. Sorry, Ms. Halverson, I fell behind a little bit. That's okay. Ms. Halverson, do I have your correct address on Page Street in Stoughton? Yes. All right. You've been cited for displaying false vehicle registration plate. This citation carries a penalty of $187, but zero points. Uh, we checked the forfeiture range on this. It is zero to $500, so kind of kind of in the middle of that. It's $100 plus cost. Do you understand what displaying a false vehicle registration plate is? Yes. All right. Uh, we understand the penalty is $187? Yes. Any questions for the court? No. Now is the time I take your plea. Three plea options are guilty, no contest, or not guilty. No contest. Okay. You understand that with no contest plea, I must find you guilty? Yes. Have you, um, well, I'll, I'll explain to that in a little bit. So, all right, you understand the no contest plea. Uh, let me read the police report. I want to make sure I have a factual basis for okay. your plea. Okay, so I do, I have reviewed the police report. I do find a factual basis for your plea, accept your no contest plea and find you guilty. Um, I told you the forfeiture range. Anything you'd like to say before I uh, decide on a fine amount? Um, yes, I was just, I had bought the car from my dad's neighbor and her mom had passed away. And when I went to the DMV, um, I didn't know that I needed a letter from the court saying that she had permission to sell the vehicle. So then I couldn't register it because her mom had died and she got um, like power over her belongings, you know, and I didn't know that I needed a let when I went to go register okay. it. Okay, let me, uh, I, I'm curious because I needed, to, this comes up in my practice as well, so okay. So the neighbor, the neighbor's the one that passed away? Yes, my dad's, na well, her, my dad's neighbor's mom and both the parents had were passed away, so she got, her and her sister had power of their belongings. Would have been, they would have been personal representatives uh, of the yeah. estate. Because, yeah, not power of attorney. That, that yeah. stops when somebody passes. Sorry. Away. Okay, so the neighbor, so your dad's neighbor's mom. Okay, so what <laughs> happened was the, the decedent, the, the woman who died, her, her children could have been the ones to register the vehicle. And instead of doing that, they just sold you the vehicle yeah. directly. Yeah. Okay, so there was no proper paperwork. So the state says, well, you've got to supply us with the paperwork. Yeah, and I didn't know that when I went okay. to the DMV. Have you been able to get the car properly registered now? I went and did it the same day I got that ticket. Okay. Okay, so 
So now if you get pulled over again, the, the license plates will match the plates. Yep, the plates. And when you went in and you explained the whole process, you paid the, the registration fee and the yeah, Yep, and everything. Okay. Yep, and, downstairs here. Okay, so, oh, that's why you went downstairs and they were able to assist you with that. Then. Yep, they let me register it and everything here, and I took care of it the same day. Okay. Because you took care of it the same day and because the, the problem has been resolved, what I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce this from $100 plus cost to $50 plus cost. Okay, okay thank that's you. still within the range, and that will be a total forfeiture of $124. So okay. you save $62, basically. Thank you. Sure. Well, I think that it's appropriate under the circumstances. Then, Thank you. $124. Now, of these $124, can you pay for that today? Um, could I have the 30-day yeah, extension, Yeah, I will please? grant you 30 days to pay. Thank you. And if you have difficulty paying after 30 days, I'm going to give you a form. Call the number on the form and set up a hearing. I, okay. You know, if you can pay 30 days, that'd be great. But if you can't, let yeah. us know that so I don't have to penalize you further, further for that then. Okay. So, Okay, um, make sure that you pay because otherwise I have to. You know, no, I'm expecting my taxes so. any day, so okay. <laughs> thank okay. you. So, all right, any other questions for the court? No, thank you. Due date will be March 24th. Make sure that you pay by that date then. And with this, that will take care of for this evening then. Thank you. The next person is James Anderson. He came late. Oh, sure. However, he has a 6 o'clock hearing because the first offense was same as this one and he reached an agreement to hold it open for six months and now he has a second one. Okay. So I guess it depends on what he pleads on this, how we'll handle the okay. hearing. Okay. If that makes any sense. Okay. Yeah, it does. All right. Uh, James Anderson. Good morning, or good uh, good evening, I guess it is, uh, Mr. Anderson. Do you have your correct address in Ashbury Lane? Yes. All right. You have, once, um, you have a citation for tonight for initial appearance. It's for outdoor storage and unsightly items in unlicensed vehicles. Um, you also have one a hearing uh, regarding the same one about a uh, hold open for six months. We have a hearing on it to determine uh, basically if this falls within the right. six-month period, correct? Okay, I'm, and I'm, I can't, I'm, sir. I'm. Go ahead. I didn't follow what you just said. Oh. Okay. I. Um, let me preface something here. Uh, there are two mailboxes at this property. It's a older two flat. Uh, the upstairs is rented to another party. The person who has that okay. vehicle. Let me let me stop you there. I'm, I'm just saying that. No, I know. I, her children I, take the mail out of the mailbox and run it up to their mother and I don't always get my mail the second thing you're talking about I don't know what what you're speaking of okay okay here's what we'll do we're gonna have to wait until the processor uh, completes her cases she'll be here between 545 and 6 that way that we can handle both the hearing and the initial appearance at the same time see I, I'm not aware of an initial appearance yeah I, you got I, I was, another citation is what's 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 happened well I got I got a letter that said I got a citation in the mail from Mr. Kittleson, the building inspector. I don't know. I, I don't know anything about the citation. Approximately a week later, 10 days later, a letter came in the mail, said that I was to go to an initial uh, hearing downstairs. Okay. And that's, that's what I thought I was here for today. Oh, okay. Yeah, that hearing isn't downstairs. It's here. So... Um, Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to enter a not guilty plea for the citation tonight because there seems to be some confusion about it. So for the initial appearance that you don't know about, I'll enter a not guilty plea. And then we have a, um, we have a status conference on what to do for this hold open case as well. Um, what I'm going to do is I will schedule both matters uh, for a pretrial conference with the city attorney both the uh, hearing date today for the hope for the uh, judgment and order because um, what happens is that you got a recitation in August and it says yeah. and they, you reached a plea agreement with the prosecutor saying that this is going to be held open for six months I that never happened sir who did that I have no idea okay. I, I have not talked to anyone here uh, the prosecutor's note said you appeared and I signed the order. But this is back in August 11th. No. Okay. 
All right, so what, what I'm going to do, I'll enter a not guilty plea. We'll schedule this matter for a pretrial conference. It'll be on March 8th. Appear at the pretrial conference, and then you have one outstanding ticket, and then this will be the second citation. So I'll, I'll make a note to the prosecutor. And if you want to wait around till, till 6. I, I, you're saying I have it out. I received a ticket in the mail from Mr. Kittleson. Mm -hmm. And then after that ticket, it came a letter from that I was supposed to go, go to a pretrial this evening. No, no, here. So, but where does the, the second ticket, I don't know where that. It was from before. It was, let me review this. It was for um, five, May 25th of 2016, you received a citation. You enter, you came here in court, you entered an not guilty plea, and it was scheduled for a pretrial conference on August 10th, 2016. You, and you and the city attorney reached a uh, plea agreement that says held open for six months no other outdoor storage citations dismissed if receive an outdoor storage citation within six months uh plead to this citation is what the pretrial conference knows so you don't you okay. don't seem to remember that no 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 all right, sir, uh, excuse me you had said august 11th i you didn't that was a year a year ago or nine months ago right, right. but I was in contact with Steve Kittleson, the building inspector, and he told me that at that time everything was all right. See, I don't know. I don't know any I, of this. No, I realize that. That's. Let, let me finish. You've interrupted me a couple times, okay? And I understand. I think the easiest way to resolve this is because what happens is if you keep if you keep telling me facts outside the prosecutor, I'm going to have to recuse myself, and you're going to have to go to another judge because I've already poisoned, you know, I, I affected my ability essentially to hear this case unbiasedly. So what I'm going to do is I'll enter a not guilty plea. It was scheduled for a hearing about whether you violated the terms of the second one. I will hold that you that you appeared at that hearing. And what we're going to do is I'll have you, you and the city prosecutor can talk about both of these citations. And then you, with the city prosecutor, you can tell her what Steve Kittleson told you at the time and how it's been resolved. I, I don't know, and I, it's not before me at this point. Mm -hmm. So I think what we, we can do is just schedule the both matters for a pretrial conference at that date, and then you see if you and the city can resolve both of these issues then. Okay, so to make sure I'm straight, at one time you said she might be coming up here. Did you want me to wait tonight? No, I don't. Or, or I, I've already made a determination that you can both meet at the same time and discuss both of them at, right. on March 8th March at 4.30. Yeah. And I've okay. got that written down here. Thank so. you. Is this ours? Yeah. Okay. All right. So I will inform the city kind of what I, what I said to you. If you want to wait around for the city prosecutor, but I'll tell her the same thing that I told you then. Okay. Okay. With, and once you receive that, you don't have to worry about the hearing at 6 or uh, pretrial conference or anything. Uh, we'll, we'll basically roll everything over to March 8th, and then you can meet with the city prosecutor on that at that date and time. Okay, and, and you're giving me that paper now, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay. So that, nothing's coming in the mail? No. Nope. Yeah, I don't, yeah, we try to just do everything in person then. So that way you've got it, Mr. Anderson. Okay, thank you. Okay, we can kind of review everything else. Not guilty plea. All right. Brian Adams is a bond forfeiture. Ruben Boardman is a default judgment. Damon Brewer is a default judgment. Kelsey Brooks is a default judgment. Lavander Cavett is a default judgment. Joseph Conant is a default judgment. Oswaldo de la Vega is a default judgment. Brian Dolmas is a default judgment. Montario Evans is a bond forfeiture. Ryan Gable. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me. Uh, Mont Montario Evans. Um, it was a second offense. I'm going to. Uh, the forfeiture, I'm going to order be $303 and then grant. And all these grant 30 days to pay unless I hear differently from the defendants. Right right, cool. <laughs> Ryan Gable is a bond forfeiture. Peter Gander is a bond forfeiture. Bridget Gossen is a default judgment on all four citations. 
Andrew Gibbs is a default judgment. Nevin Riez Gravit Biak is a default judgment. Petra Guerrero Leia Leva, excuse me, Petra Guerrero Leva is a bond forfeiture. Holly Hack is a default judgment in all three citations. Anna Hammer is a default judgment on both citations. James Hammes is a default judgment. Ty Hewlett is a default judgment on both citations. Gerald Johnson is a default judgment. Devante Joyner is a default judgment on both citations. Brian Judd is a default judgment. Robert uh, Knipfer is a default judgment. Karen Kohler is a bond forfeiture. Kimberly Corte is a default judgment. Devin Lathrop is a default judgment on both citations, three citations, excuse me. Philip Linerud is a bond forfeiture. Tiara Lashley Long is a default judgment on both citations. Joshua Maybe is a bond forfeiture. Christopher McGee is a default judgment. Donald Moore is a default judgment. Dottie Motley is a default judgment. Brenda Navarro is a default judgment on both citations. Eugene Nelson IV is a default judgment. Jamie Olson is a bond forfeiture. Uh, Leah Oppelt, Oppelt is a bond forfeiture. Rebecca Osman is a default judgment. Tressa Porter is a default judgment. Brett Powell is a default judgment. Bryce Pretchell is a default judgment. Vallis Nicole Price Conklin is a default judgment. Sarda Quinn is a default judgment. Noah Quinton Patrick Reek is a default judgment. Susan Rice is a bond forfeiture. Aaron Riley is a default judgment. Very candid. No restitution in the Aaron Riley matter. Jamar Sanders Jackson is a default judgment on both citations. Joshua Schuitz is a default judgment. Cody Patrick O'Connor Schultz is a default judgment. Jesse Smith is a default judgment. Anisha Sotart is a default judgment on all three citations. Dustin Stampley uh, Rowan is a default judgment. Dante Steinmetz is a default judgment. Uh, Dane Sutton is a bond forfeiture. Brandon Tankey is a bond forfeiture. Braden Thorpe is a bond forfeiture. Good evening, Ms. Wilson. Good evening, Judge. Good evening, Mary. Braxton Walton is a default judgment on both citations. Denise Westpaul is a bond forfeiture. Jason Westrick is a default judgment. Aaron White is a bond forfeiture. Nicholas Whitesell Whitesill is a default judgment. Anthony Wiley is a default judgment. Amber Williams is a default judgment on both citations. Tequila Williams is a default judgment. And Demetria Winfrey is a default judgment. Okay. Uh, Ms. Wilson, um, a defendant by the name of James Anderson came in. He had a uh, citation for outdoor storage for unsightly items in an initial appearance. He also received one looks like a plea agreement was reached in August with the hold open for six months. 
and there was some question about that, so we had a hearing on it. I rolled both of them into the same situation and had it for a pretrial conference. Okay. And so. Thank you. Yeah, we'll see that on March 8th rather than, in, I wanted to, I told him essentially the same thing. There's a lot of questions that I said, let me just hold both matters for, for, pre, for a pretrial. Then. Okay. So, just so you're not, you're, you're aware I'll of that. I'll be ready. All right. Thank you. All right. Okay, do you have pre-trial conferences for me? I do. Was this the big calendar? Yeah, it's been big for the last few months. Thank you. Uh, uh, you get the name of it, I think, now. <laughs> Getting through people quicker. Okay. For an operating after suspension, if you dropped it down on no live driver's license on person, they went and got registered then? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry I didn't notice. note that, Judge. Yeah. No, he did. I just, I, I assumed that, but I wanted to just put it on the record. Yes, he did. There's a juvenile that uh, will find guilty of uh, disorderly conduct for based upon a failure to appear. Uh, th I'll have that person be eligible for community service if need be. So. Thank you, Judge. Non-confirming temporary shelter. I've not seen that one before. Yeah, it was like a boat cover kind of. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. It was not. It was ugly. <laughs> <laughs>
had approved all the pre-trial conferences. Thank you, Ms. Wilson. Thank you. This is. Thank you. City of Stilton, uh, the court will call City of Stilton versus Elvin Volkman. Yeah, if you want to just have a seat at the council table. Okay. Um, uh, Mr. Volkman, you missed a pretrial and for passing a no passing zone, failure to keep vehicle under control and display unauthorized registration plates. Yes. I, I, what it was is I thought I was going to have more time before the court date. I actually seen you guys sent me out a notice for it. I didn't open it thinking, oh, I had some time because I was going to get the vehicle registration. There was a bunch of stuff that I had talked to um, the, the attorney with about. So I didn't open it up thinking, oh, you know, it's got to be farther out because I told her I needed some time to get all that taken care of. And I opened it up and the court date had passed. It was only like a week or two later instead of being farther out than I thought it was going to be. So... That's kind of how I missed it. City's position? Uh, no, motion reopened. No objection to the motion. Thank you. I really appreciate it. I apologize. I should have opened it right away you know, and realized it was sooner than it was. Pen's about to die. Oh, sorry. Okay. I'll go ahead and grant your motion to reopen. Thank we'll you. We'll schedule this matter for pretrial conference on March 8th at 5 p.m. Down okay. What's it? Downstairs. In conference room mark pre-trial conferences make sure that you appear this time because yes, it's a lot harder to reopen it a second time it definitely won't okay. miss it yes again bring whatever documents or, or might help your case and right chance to see if you and the city can resolve the case okay and then do i have a second where i could chat with her about part of that if, if do you have a second I'll, or i'll leave that up to you we we have a few more things but do you actually do do my i mean no. okay well, uh, here's a pre-trial conference notice okay great like thank that. you Actually, Ms. Wilson, if you want, can you wait just a minute? There's somebody else that I, I'd like to, to, yep. to have. Can you then just wait out. Yeah. Okay. Sir, if you want to uh, come, up, come up to the microphone and just tell us. Yes. Okay. Are you here for a uh, hearing? I am. Okay. What's your name? Uh, first name is Gregory. Last name is Cyrus, C-Y-R-U-S. Uh, motion to reopen the initial appearance date was January 25th, and you thought the court date was in February, not January. Correct. Sir. Okay, and um, you believe you have a defense of the action? Well, I guess I, I, well, I, I just wanted to appear just before you, either, either way, just to explain my position. Okay, go ahead. Well, um, basically, I guess my defense, if you can call it as such, is that um, I had recently moved to the south part of town, and I thought that Taylor Road was... 35 until you reached um, the bridge in Stoughton here, in the, I guess near downtown. Okay. And um, I had previously been living on the, uh, like I guess near the new Walmart part of town. And I, I don't know, I just thought in Wisconsin the more uh, rural parts of the, the town were, were 35 like they are over by, by the plant, by the Stoughton trailer plant where I work. So um, if a fine is to be paid, I, I understand for uh, my actions, but I was just wondering if maybe perhaps the points could be dropped or reduced um, based on a previous good driving record. I don't know. Did, did you have any previous citations? I don't, sir. Okay. I know I will note for the record that it's 11 to 15 miles an hour over. Is that your understanding as well? Uh, yes, it was. I was a little under 40. Well, the, the officer said 40. Uh, over uh, 40 miles an hour, he had me clocked at. Okay. Normally, I give a 10 mile an hour leeway. Uh, no objection. Is there any objection from the city? No objection. Okay. No, so what I can do, Mr. Cyrus, is I can reduce this from 11 to 15 to nine miles hour over the limit. That would result in three to, rather than four points. Same forfeiture of 9880. All right. I would. I would accept that, sir. Okay. Uh, based upon the amended um, citation, I'll amend the citation to nine miles an hour over the limit, which would be three points instead of four. And that's the minimum moving violation for a speeding citation is three. So one to nine, that's the category you fall in. Uh, I'll find you, I'll amend the citation, find you guilty of nine miles an hour over the limit, three points. I'll, the, the, you're already at the minimum forfeiture of 9880. Um, have you paid that or? I haven't. I didn't know if it was. Okay. I should. Much, can you pay for that this evening? I can, sir. Okay. I'll give you the. You know what? I'll give you 30 days so we can just mail it to you. That would probably be easiest. 
Okay. I'll give you 30 And will days. it be sent to my address, or, or yes. should I just the come in? The address we have is uh, Nygaard Street in Stoughton. That's actually a new address, so, so uh, that's actually, I was moving, that's the, the, the source that's of the this. So I actually, I actually have a new address okay, now. Okay, why don't you give us the new address? Okay. The address is 976 Yuma Circle, and that's Y-U-M-A Circle, Stoughton 53589. Okay. We'll send the notice of the nine mile hour limit, three points, of 9880 to that address and give you uh, 30 days to pay. All right, I appreciate it. Don't forget, because if I if you don't pay within the 30 days, then what will happen is is that I, my only option is either to collect suspend your driver's license for a year or collect you either through a refund or, or oh yeah, no services. problem. Okay, just so you're aware of that. Okay, that will take care of it for this evening. Okay, we'll mail out that notice. Thank then. you. Good evening. All right. Thank you. Thanks. All right, Let's go out. A lot of reopen today. Yeah. But since it's a nice day, I don't think that That's people will stay away, huh? number of motions to reopen at six probably wait for 10 or 15 minutes till they see they arrive anything from you Mary there's a able to come I said I would give you the form okay has mandatory overtime oh okay there's a hearing on which one we only have two left right there have been a couple a that I add. Oh. And they, I'm sorry if I don't have that <laughs> updated with no, you. No, that's great. People are calling. One is uh, City of Stoughton versus Lori Ann Horton. A motion reopen. Uh, she left a voicemail at the city attorney's office requesting pretrial via phone. She has a mandatory overtime at job, and I don't think they ever received the voicemail. So. Um, no. <laughs> no I verify that. Okay. Maybe. Is operating after suspension and operating motor vehicle without insurance. What I do, uh, city's position on the motion reopen. It was a pretrial date at February. Or no, it was the oh pretrial date. Did I already default her today? Pretrial date of February twenty second. February eighth. February eighth. Okay. No objection to the motion. Okay. To I'll go ahead and grant it. We'll schedule this for um, March eighth, and then hopefully she gets her. Uh, information updated and contacts you. I, one time I had somebody contact me and they said I left the city attorney when I was a prosecutor for a different court. I left the message and it, I found out they left it like five minutes before court began. So sometimes maybe it could be just the phone messages crossed. But it's uh, Andrew the paralegal and I, he said he's, he's pretty good. Yeah, that's yeah. just a, um, that was a previous plea agreement and she did come. Okay, uh, my Mayana Webb complied. Uh, no further, uh, no other citations. So I'll go ahead and dismiss that citation. And the one that was scheduled for trial tonight, just okay. for your signature. Okay. Um, both that. Oh. Sign the order and this is just <laughs> what I did for the this one on the order. It was 1.01 .01 to 0 0.149. I crossed it off and I put 194. Okay. This was the one where they hired an expert. They were she was a 256 or she she 256 he. he and it was amended. The 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 blood alcohol expert said it was a 19 and I'm like that's fine, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna bump it all the way down to a 0 .0, 0 0.1, which is what the order said. So I crossed off the order. I'll put my initials. I'll accept the plea agreement. Yeah. That's 
two months, six months, but I ID. You can sign that by ID and exemption, we'll get it to the And that was ID. where she, or he, he, it was a sports car, yeah. Yeah, that's right, that's fine. And that's why they, I think that's why they made the exemptions in the first yeah. place. So. Yeah. Really? No. Sir, if you want to come up to the microphone. Name, please. Christopher Johnson. It might be easier just to move up the microphone. Maximum is 40, right? Oh, he's an adult. He's oh, 18. okay. That's right. Okay, um, you are uh, Christopher Johnson. You t you're attending Operation Fresh Start Madison for your high school diploma. Wanted to do uh, court's permission to do community, community service instead of having to pay for your citations, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, $514 would be, I offer it at $8 an hour. Um, uh, city's position. No objection. Okay. Just so he's aware it's with collections right now, so I'll have to take it out. But if he doesn't comply by the due date, it's going to go right back to. Okay. Okay. When is the due date? When what I make it? Okay. It All right. Um, I will allow community service. I think it's a good permission. To, and then, um, are you living in Stoughton right now? I uh, know Madison. Okay. Um, my three requirements for community service is that you uh, do it um, for not for profit. I'll give you credit eight dollars an hour. Not for profit. You can't be paid. It can't be something you normally do. Mm -hmm. We'll give you the forms for it. If you could just have your supervisor sign off on it, I'll deem it as served. For sixty-four hours of community service, how much time would you need for that? Mm. That's pretty much it. Sixty-four hours. No, I I'm saying how mu how long would you need to like how many months would you need to, to complete it by? Two or three. Okay. I'll give you four just to make sure. Mm -hmm. So that will give you ample time. I don't want you to be rushed for it. I'll okay. give you four months. Your account is in state collections right now. What we'll do is we'll remove it from state collections, but then make sure that you submit the form to us by within four months because if you don't, I, my only option is to put you back in collections, and I'd rather not do that then. All right. Okay. Uh, and we'll send you the paperwork. I think we've got your – you just sent a, a letter to the court on, on – on uh, February 8th, that's your correct address? Yes. Okay, we'll send you the, the forms to that address. Just have somebody sign off and return it to us then. Okay. Any questions for the court? No, thank you. All right, they'll take care of it for this evening. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. For thank you. In. Have a great day. Thanks. Thank you. What's that? No, we just sent them a ticket for suspension on my license already. So I said, because the last time. Sir, I, I just want to be careful. We've got oh, live sorry. mics, so. <laughs> Dukas? a few minutes late for the parent teacher conference. Oh. Hey Mary, I wonder if you would know this. Um, if a citation is sent in just, um, for suspension, is there any way that you, you can get that back? Yeah, I can cancel it. You can? Yeah. Okay. Um, Mr. Volkman, do you want to tell the court uh, your story? Let's just have a seat at council yeah. too. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. All right. So I'll, I'll explain. So when we initially met um, at our pretrial conference, and Mr. Volkman, please interrupt me if this isn't your sure. recollection. Um, 
he had told me that he had received a handicap parking citation that hadn't that he wanted to contest and we must have had some sort of miscommunication and that was never contested and now that's the citation that's Suspend. That's different. When it's that's a different. Okay. Violation that's handled at the police department, unless it's contested. So if it's past due, they take care of. They usually just suspend the registration. We, the court doesn't get involved in that. Okay. So, so is he? You um, just have to pay for that one then. Either that, or if you talk to them downstairs the, at the dispatch window, tell them that he wants to contest it, and have them remove the suspension or revocation, whatever. Yeah, and, that, and that's what I was trying to talk to her about, and she pretty much said, I, I don't, I can't do anything. She said, you have to let the judge know what's going on with it, because that, that, that citation was, has, is pretty much was all with these other tickets, is how, how it all, everything happened. That's oh, where everything I, came I from. I would think I'll, that. I'll, I can handle it tomorrow. I'll talk to them. Um, oh, okay. They're busy in the evening, so I'll, I'll talk to them and. So you want to contest it? Yeah, that, and that's what I thought, assumed what, what was happening. And I guess it's another, my own stupid fault that I, I, I actually had opened those up and it said that, you know, the ticket was going up and, and I kind of, I thought that we were, were pulling that in with these because it's all the same thing. That's where these tickets came from. That's how everything started was the original um, handicap violation. Okay. That's here's, why he was there. Here's what we can do. We'll, we'll, we'll alert the police department. We'll contest that. We'll get the, the, the notice and I'll, we'll, the court will send notice to both you and, and the city prosecutor. That okay. way you're on a, a level playing field and then we'll get you that in time for the uh, pre-trial okay. conference. Great. Time. Thank you so much. I Thank appreciate you, it. Thank you, Judge. Thank you, Mary, for your time. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. Have a good night. Bye. Thank you, Alex. Okay. Are we, are we waiting for uh, Mr. Balducas? Mr. Balducas has scheduled a, a pre-trial conference. We haven't heard from... Request to reopen. Bell Dukas. Okay. Well, you know what? We'll give him five more minutes. Normally, if they fill out the form and send it uh, and then don't always appear, there could be some confusion that they filled out the form. They thought that that would do it. They technically should be here, but I try and treat it, the motions reopen liberally. That way, if the, okay. everybody gets their day in court. But... If you don't fill out the form, if you don't appear for a pretrial conference, or for a hearing date, um, then I, I tend to would deny the, the motion reopen. We'll see if he appears in five minutes. I'll note for the record that it's motion to reopen was scheduled for six o'clock. It's now six ten. I typically give fifteen out minutes as a leeway time, but after fifteen minutes, I usually will deny the motions. Then, so you know, we can wait here for five more minutes.
I know. Did you get outside at all? Uh, yeah. Oh no. Well, I come in later for court, so That's I have the morning. We sat outside at lunch for a little bit. Of course, it's not going to last. <laughs> It's good to see everybody out uh, yeah. doing stuff, knowing that, that we had limited good weather. Oh. Everyone's a real human again. <laughs> Although that will lead to more, I would call it disorderly conduct season, though, too. Oh, so. yes. Yep. Okay, I'll note for the record that it's now 6:15. Uh, the pretrial, or excuse me, motion reopened was scheduled the matter for City of Stoughton versus Nicholas Baldukas. I'll note that no, there is nobody in the court other than the uh, bailiff and the prosecutor, the clerk, and myself. Uh, therefore, I will go. Since the, Mr. Baldukas failed to appear, I will deny his motion reopen. Anything else from the city? Nothing further. Anything else, Mary? All right, that will conclude today's matters. Thank you. The Thank court you. is adjourned. Thank you.